Many of us have suffered an allergic reaction or we live with one and know how to manage it. When we're exposed to the thing we're allergic to, there are common signs and we know what to do. But for some people, it can be quite extreme and potentially life-threatening. This is what we call anaphylaxis. Today on Health Matters, we discuss anaphylaxis and why it's so dangerous. So anaphylaxis is really just a severe form of allergy but it can be life-threatening and that's what makes it different. So common allergies will normally affect one part of the body, so the skin, the nose, the eyes, or the lungs with asthma, for instance, where anaphylaxis affects the entire body. And that is what makes it so dangerous. Anaphylaxis can happen within seconds and it can lead to death, although that is very rare. The two important organ systems that are involved are the lungs and also the heart. So when the lungs are involved, and people have difficulty breathing, there's a lot of inflammation, lots of swelling in the lung. So people have, will have wheezing. There can also be swelling of the throat and the tongue. And then as the heart is involved, the blood vessels open up and you get a drop in blood pressure and people will start feeling faint. And that is what becomes very dangerous. They can go into shock. And then some people also get um, their gut that is affected. So they can get vomiting, they can get cramps on the stomach and they can even get diarrhea. When it comes to treating anaphylaxis, time is of the essence. When you go into shock, your blood pressure is really low, so your brain is not getting enough blood, um, and that is what can kill you ultimately, or you can have a heart attack. So you need to act incredibly fast. If you know that you have anaphylaxis, you should always have an adrenaline pen or an EpiPen, and that should be administered immediately, and then go to the hospital. Now, this is really important because even if you are feeling better after the EpiPen, there is a chance that you can have a secondary reaction and that can happen in up to a quarter of people. So you need to be observed for quite some time by the medical personnel and they, of course, need to see if you didn't suffer any damage. According to the experts, the most common cause of anaphylaxis in children is food. And for adults, it's certain types of medication. And it's not only when ingesting or touching an allergen, merely smelling one can set off an attack. It's very interesting just on allergy that there are more than 170 different foods that can cause an allergic reaction. But when we look at anaphylaxis, it's mostly peanuts and tree nuts, but also shellfish, eggs, wheat or milk as well, especially cow's milk. In terms of medication, it's often antibiotics, so people should be familiar with penicillin allergy, but also some medications that contain what we call a sulfur. Malignancies, we use monoclonal antibodies, and some people can um, have an anaphylactic reaction to those as well. Given that triggers could be anywhere and in anything, there are certain precautions that people who are prone to anaphylaxis should take. Anaphylaxis plan is really important. So you have to be prepared in case you do have a reaction. So always carry two EpiPens. So if you don't respond within the first five minutes, you should actually have a second dose. Alert bracelet is really important that people know and there must be somebody that you can phone. If you see you're going to lose consciousness, you need to phone them immediately and say, this is where I am, come and, come and fetch me, take me to the hospital. It's also important for, for people to explain to their healthcare workers, because some of these reactions occur to medication, for instance. So healthcare workers have to be aware of previous reactions. As we know, common allergies can develop at any stage in our lives. They usually show up when we're young, but can also appear as we get older. And if you have a family history of allergies, you are at higher risk. It always starts with a good history. So it's important to see a healthcare worker who has experience with allergies, and they will take a careful history to look at your symptoms, how long it took to develop, what kind of foods or allergens were you exposed to, and that will help a lot. If that is not enough, they can do a blood test. There are also um, skin prick tests. They are slightly more accurate, but they need to be interpreted with caution. It's something that should be done under the supervision of um, somebody with an interest and experience in allergies. When it comes to common allergies, they are easier to manage. And it's even been said that some people outgrow their allergies with time. But unfortunately, with anaphylaxis, there is no way to treat the underlying immune system condition that can lead to it all. All you can do is take the necessary precautions to protect yourself and, of course, be prepared with epinephrine, commonly known as an EpiPen for an anaphylactic attack.